Hello, and welcome to the garden. You'll never guess what these are. <laughs> I just recorded the video where I cleaned up these pomegranate trees, and I got really excited about it. And so, um, in fact, I got so excited. These here are pomegranate trees. In fact, I'm gonna come up closer Show you exactly what we got here see we got true leaves coming out right here those are the cotyledon the big brown ones are the cotyledon leaves the first two leaves that come out but these that have these long skinny leaves those are young pomegranates this is amazing this is just amazing so i am planning on planting these up. So <laughs> here we go. So if you're new here, I'm Bowtie Dave. Welcome to the garden. We're getting ready for winter, doing some cleaning out. If you didn't see the cleaning out process here, watch one of the just videos that just came out um, not too long ago. If you go to our channel and look at uh, under the uploads, you'll see it's, it's there. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited. So um, we're gonna take some of these pomegranates and put them in solo cups and uh, hopefully grow some new pomegranate trees. Now, there's a lot more there than I need. And so um, I'm not planting all those for this property. In fact, I really only need like two right now. Of course, if more die, I'll need more. But um, in the meantime, I'm planning on getting more seedlings ready to go and um, the hope is that in the spring, if we do a seed give seedling giveaway at our church, then I'll have some pomegranate trees to give away. So that'll be kind of cool at least. So anyway, um, I have a bucket here full of soil and this is this uh, uh, the stay green uh, soil that I got at Lowe's. Um, this is flower and vegetable garden soil. It uh, has a 0 0.05, 0 0.04, 0 0.03 NPK. Um, the first number, the N, is the higher number, uh, which is good because I'm a little more interested in green and roots right now. I'm not looking at fruit, so you'll notice that fruit number is low. Again, we're talking about NPK. The rule is um, shoots, roots, and fruits. Again, it's a rule of thumb, it's a broken thumb, we won't go there. This, but uh, there's a little more to it, but that's kind of the general thing. And, and uh, I use that as my guide. So um, the highest number is the NPK. So that being said, one of the things I'm going to use here is Dr. Earth Homegrown Organic and Natural Handcrafted Blend Tomato and Vegetable Herb Fertilizer. Now, this says for tomato and herbs. The, that's kind of a contradiction because the tomato, you want more fruits. So you want more on the last number, last two numbers technically. But uh, the interesting thing about this is the NPK on this is 463. That's not right. I thought it was different than that. Um, Well, this is what happens when I decide to record a video. Anyway, 43K, uh, 463, 463, NPK. Um, four is shoots, six, P is for roots, K, three is for fruits. That K is low. We're not really interested in fruits at this stage. Later in their life, we're gonna be interested in fruit, but today, we're more interested in getting them roots and shoots, and even most interested in getting them roots because their roots are nothing. They're very minimal right now, so we need to get them more roots. So I like using this Dr. Earth Homegrown for first time I plant out seeds um, early in the life, uh, not when I'm trying to get fruits. When I'm, trying to, when I'm planting tomatoes uh, and I want fruits off of it, I'll get something with a higher number at the end, which we talked about in the last, in a previous video, where we planted the peppers that were in these cups into grow bags. 
but a uh, little bit different purpose today. So basically the soil is already good. It's got some food in it. Uh, this is some, I, I had to empty out a, three bags I had laying around. And uh, it's a little dry, but it's still alive. It still has a little moisture in it. And I'm going to supplement it with some of this. Now, really want to mix this in here good and I'm gonna dig down as deep as I can uh, I'm also going to be adding more to this as I use it but I want to make sure this is good and rich now here's the thing this is an organic fertilizer as an organic fertilizer is not going to burn the roots like chemical fertilizers can now, if you break the rules and give your plants too much of the chemical, non-organic fertilizers, you can burn their plants to the ground. It's rough. And so you don't want to do that. Um, but and it's one of the reasons I really like the organic. Not only is it more, more healthy, but the organic is just closer to what the plant needs. And normally the numbers on organic fertilizers are lower and that's why because they're organic they're what God made in nature and they're using what God made in nature in the feed and so I think that's a very important thing so I've got this mix probably three-quarters of the way down and basically I'm going to start off filling some of these cups and getting their rate Ooh, yeah there's definitely life in here I see a bug. Yeah. No worms yet. Yeah, I was scooping around with that trowel. I may not see any live worms. I don't know. I didn't even think about there being worms in this stuff. This stuff has been sitting on my covered seedling benches. I know there are insects over there. Uh, the lizards love going over there. I love unearthing the lizards and watching, the, I mean, unearthing the uh, these little beetles and watching the lizards go nuts over them. When I uh, water my compost pile, you know, the, the little beetles come crawling out of there and the uh, lizards come crawling over the edge of the compost bin and just bam, 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 eating up, eating up the lizards. It's awesome. So, we got one tray here with 10 red Solo cups ready to go. Now, they do have a little moisture in them, uh, but they're a little drier than I feel comfortable with putting these in. Now, these, the soil in here is very moist. And, yeah, I don't want to put these into this dry a soil uh, just yet. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do another tray here because I really want to get 20 of these going. Um, they were all these trays, and there's actually a third tray that's the less developed tray. I got the two most developed trays for this project, but the, uh, the less developed tray I left to do this again in the future. And the thing is, I don't know how many I'm going to get out of here, um, I'm looking at these seedlings and some of them aren't ready. A lot of them are. Problem is they're real crowded and they need to get uh, into bigger, into more space of their own really because these they're, they're crowding each other out and they're gonna start killing each other as they choke themselves out and we don't want that. So, uh, oh, here's a beetle. Let me see if I can show you one of the beetles. See, this is what the, see if I can get them in my hand here. There he is. Little, uh, that's what uh, the, the lizards go after. In fact, I flicked him on the floor down there. He, did, he doesn't have long to live because I know underneath this fire pit, there's some lizards living and they're probably already looking at them, licking their chops. He's not moving. I think he knows he's in a bad position. 
I'm in a bad spot. Okay. There are 20 cups ready to go. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to water these down just a little bit. Basically what I want is for the soil to be moist enough that when I dig a hole, uh, when I dig a hole in it with my little tool here, it'll keep its shape while I put, ooh, this thing is spraying me. This is cold water. It is very cold here in Panhandle of Florida the past couple of mornings. Right now it's afternoon. Temperature's kind of nice. Didn't even have the heart to put on a bow tie. Whew. I don't know what's wrong with me. But uh, yeah, these are soaking in real good. Little insects crawling out, which means these, uh, this soil is full of life. Gonna give that a few minutes, but uh, what we're gonna do here, now let me introduce you to my favorite tool. This is an icing spatula. Yes, an icing spatula. I have iced cakes with this. Uh, I love it because it's not sharp. It's got a nice rounded edge. It's long and skinny. I can reach in, I can get a whole seedling. I can reach in those little uh, uh, seedling trays that are, you know, two inch by two inch or whatever, and I can pull out a seedling, uh, a, you know, a root ball or whatever. But uh, yeah, I use this thing a lot. This is my favorite tool for in the garden. And uh, it goes through the dishwasher and gets used in the kitchen too. But uh, what Mrs. Bowtie doesn't know, she's not here to supervise. So, what I'm going to do here is very carefully, I'm going to find my first victim. And I see a good one right here. Now, I don't know how these roots look. So, this is going to be a bit of an education for me, as well as you. But... Looky there. Oh my goodness, look at that. This thing has roots that long. I am shocked and awed. That's amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very careful. We're being very gentle with this. I'm going to come in here. This moist soil is even more moist soil now. I'm going to make a hole deep enough. I stuck my spatula in about that deep. Made a hole. Now, when you're grabbing a seedling like this, you don't grab it by the stem, you grab it by a leaf. I prefer a cotyledon leaf because that one's gonna be sacrificial as it is. But you let that thing down in there where it goes all the way in. Now, I use the word cotyledon leaf. That's those first two leaves that come out of the seed shell that pop up with every single plant. Well. I presume every plant, every plant I've noticed so far, um, that is what pops out. And it's normally doesn't look the same shape as the other leaves that come out. So that was actually pretty easy. I'm very pleased. We're going to water these in afterwards as well. But uh, for right now, I'm going to do a few more. Oh my goodness, there's like tons of roots in here. These things are going nuts. I'm trying to grab the leaves. This is amazing. So there's another one. Pretty good size root. I am very amazed. This is exciting. I'm holding it by the cotyledon leaf. And now this is a tree. It does not like to get buried too deep. Now you can kind of bury them a little deeper then you might at this stage because they're so young, but I'm trying not to. So I'm gonna to try to get it as close to the same as when as they grew out of the ground. See, there's a real small root. Now I know some of these are not gonna make it. I, I am not deceiving myself, that's for sure. Uh, some of these are simply not going to survive, which is why I'm planting 20 of them. Because if only a couple survive, I'm not going to be out a lot. In fact, if only a couple survive, I'll probably um, use more, use the other tray to fill in. I've got another tray down here, um, but wow, 
Okay, so this one doesn't have any true leaves yet. It's all cotyledon leaf. In fact, I heard the seed just go plink on the table. The seed is still there, but the seed is green. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Sorry. So these seedlings are seedlings that I got, are seed from seeds that I got when I produced the pomegranate juice for the church smoothies. Now, those of you who remember when that was. I'm just coming in here real gently underneath to loosen the soil. Grab a couple of cotyledon leaves. There we go. Oh, look at that one. That's a strong looking one. That's exciting. Holding it by the cotyledon leaves, I'm gonna get that root as far down there as possible. And remember, we just supplemented this soil with stuff that has more fertilizer for root development. So these things are gonna focus more on those roots than anything else, which is what you want. Looking here at the seedling, trying to figure out how deep I want that hole. Trying to match the depth of the hole, sort of, to the length of those roots. Sort of. Now there's a few here that I'm not going to... Look at this one. Huh. This, i got to show you this. This is a brand new seed. with a root coming out of it. If I had left it longer, that would have shot up another plant, which tells me there's probably a lot more in here than I'm seeing. Um, in fact, I see one right, another one right there. There's another one, yeah, same thing. Looks like a green seed with a shoot coming out. Well, it's okay, because there are way too many in this little tray. Simply put, there's just way too many. So I need to thin them out some because there are too many. I, I, I am very excited about how well these are growing. Now, here's the interesting thing. I grew these back in uh, August. Planted these in August. They did very little all the way through to about two, three weeks ago in the beginning of October. And then what happened, this is the cool thing that happened. I, we went on a trip and I put them outside beside the house and everything shot up. Just everything shot up in a period of nine days. When I came back, there were a jillion of these little seedlings everywhere. So <laughs> it is wild. Um, I learned a good lesson. If I need to sprout seeds, I need to put them out by that side of the house. The sun is right. The uh, watering schedule over there is right. It's just the right place to put them. So, I'm going to uh, speed up the camera as I go through more of these. Because if I don't, I'll be rambling on about all kinds of boring things. So here we go. So these cotyledon leaves, or cotyledon leaves, the first two leaves that have come out of these plants, you see them on tomatoes, peppers, everything. Um, what'll happen is when the plant gets enough energy from its real leaves, which is developing on top, it, those leaves will die off, fall off. Uh, so it's kind of a natural 
which is why I like grabbing them by the cotyledon leaves because they're a little less important. Not totally, but a little bit maybe. So originally my plan here was to get the strongest ones out and I tried to count how many strong ones were in these two trays and it was kind of hard to count because there are so many of them and I estimated that I might be able to get 20 out of both of these trays and I sorely miscalculated. I saw one more in here Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Oof. That one doesn't look great. Oh, no, 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 here it is over here. I see it now, okay. Severely miscalculated, having gotten another tray filled here. I actually had it here just in case. And sure enough, there were, there were 30 seedlings in this tr in this one tray so I am ecstatic with that so there are and there's a bunch of other ones in here that would have grown um, in fact there's a strong one right there look at that there's a real strong one there are others here that would have grown but that's all I've got room for right now and I now know how to propagate them out I find it very useful to have all kinds of tubs and bins and trays around to do stuff like this. I'm actually going to bottom water these. Now all these do have holes in the bottom. I've been planting in some of these solo cups for years, <laughs> some of them. Um, so they, they are well used multiple years uh, and actually they are recycled solo cups from home group uh, it's a group of people that meet at our home from church and uh, we meet every single uh, Thursday generally in fact it is Thursday right now while I'm recording this and I've uh, got to get in there because it's, it's a potluck and I got to go slice the bread um, but I need to get all these bottom watered and basically I've got about uh, three inches of water in uh, this tub here and I'll tell you what I've got too much it is not soaking in fast enough uh, I'm gonna dump some of this out shower here because I need to, this to sit on the bottom a little quicker Know if you saw on that little last fast segment where I was watering the last tray of uh, of these when I after I filled them with soil, but I shot the camera. <laughs> Fortunately, it's in a waterproof covering. Well, not waterproof, but water resistant. So I am putting these cups in here so they will soak from the bottom. Some of them are falling over, like this one here. Oh, doggone it, they're all falling over. This is not going well. I need to slow down, I'm getting in a hurry. Uh, I just buried two of them. Doggone it. Best laid plans of mice and men, right? Need to stick a couple more in here to space them out. So they'll hold each other up. I've got enough space for one more. Oh, actually, that looks like it right there. So I'm going to actually, these two that I, oh, that's one of my strong ones too, doggone it. Need my little icing spatula for this one because I really yoinked it out.
All right, let's see if these survive. That was not well done. I'm trying to rush, and what happens when you try to rush? We all know the answer to that. Things fall, things spill, things, terrible things happen. do is I need to pull this cup out, stick another one in its place. There we go. That'll hold the others up. No, it's not. It is not going to hold itself up. There we go. Okay, so those are stable now. Now I can try to straighten this one out. So we got uh, 30 plants out of that. I'm really pleased. Now, the reason why you don't grab by the stem is because it's just so easy to crush the stem. And if you crush the stem, you'll kill the plant. And so I definitely don't want to do that. But, stuff that down in there. Now let's see, the, the front irrigation is going to go off in the morning. So these are going to get overhead watered the way they're used to in the morning. I'm going to give them a this soaking in here. With the bottom watering. Just to get them settled into their soil. That's what I really want to happen here. I want the soil around those roots to settle around the roots so that the roots are in good contact with all that fertilized soil around them. Yes, I'm making a mess. I'm trying to rush. I'm still trying to rush. Slow down, bow tie. <sighs> Let them soak up. They're soaking up water. Um, some of this soil was a little drier than I thought it was, um, which if you um, watch that video where I planted out a bunch of peppers, um, makes the, uh, the soil is hydrophobic. A little hydrophobic it means it won't doesn't want to soak up the water as fast and so if these had been well moist like I thought it was some of that actually combined soil from three bag leftover bags and one of those bags was obviously moist and the others were not so that's what I believe is what happened because um, some of these are just not wanting to soak up water just yet and it just take them a few minutes Well, the tub was, no was nothing short of elegant and a really dumb idea. I remember the seedling trays are the perfect size for these little uh, tin cup holders. These are actually the tin cup holders that you get from uh, Bonnie, C Bonnie Plants when you get your plants at the hardware store. Um, this is what they come in. And uh, if you ask, sometimes they'll give you the extra ones. Uh, at our hardware store, they get thrown away anyway. So um, easy to get a hold of. I do have a few messes here that I need to clean up. But uh, now I will admit, 
I did not know how prolifically pomegranate seeds would germinate. Just simply put, I didn't know. And so I had a handful of seeds. In fact, there's a thing where I talked about collecting cucumber seeds. And I showed the pomegranate seeds in a paper plate. That's these seeds, or the ones right before them. I can't remember exactly, but it's one of the two. But uh, um, that's how many seeds I planted in those trays just to see if anything would grow. And oh boy, did they grow. Oh boy, did they grow. So we got 30 plants out of the one tray. And I bet we can get 20 out of each of the other two trays before we're done. One of them got sitting over here. I'm going to put it back out for the next round. But there you go. <laughs> Bunch of pomegranate trees. Keep an eye on the uh, garden tours because I'm going to be putting these over in the side yard. And uh, I will be sure to include them in the video so we can see how they're doing. Um, there's also a jalapeno plant over there we're keeping an eye on for when we planted out the peppers. I know where that is. I'm going to be uh, pointing that one out so we can see how it does from, the, from my planting. Uh, anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Something fun to do. I was getting ready to plant these out and I figured I'd bring you along. So pomegranate trees, more of those things. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Um, these things look so beautiful now that they're cleaned up with all the suckers cut off them. They're gorgeous. They're just gorgeous. And so I'm really excited about pomegranate trees now. I'm going to be uh, maintaining my orchard, so to speak, uh, in the future. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of trees to clean up. I've cleaned up three. I have seven left to do. But uh, keep an eye out for the uh, um, garden tour for the front and side bed for progress on these. And uh, the biggest one here has four true leaves. Two of the biggest ones have four true leaves. This one has three true leaves. In fact, the number of ones that have two true leaves, one, two, three. So at least 17 have two true leaves. So we'll give it a count in the next uh, garden tour and figure out how much they've grown. So if you want to keep an eye out for that, uh, be sure to sub subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up on this video and uh, uh, ask any questions below. I'm not a pro, so I can give idiot answers as good as anyone. I do hope that uh, one of the big guys can tell me they did the thing with the tub before too. Uh, that was kind of ugly. Next time I do this, guarantee I'm going to be planting seeds in individual solo cups so that this doesn't happen again. So there we go. Subscribe, hit like, comment below, and uh, most important, have a blessed day.